In this video, we're going to talk about how do lithium iron phosphate batteries work and why do you sometimes need to compress them? What's up everybody? Welcome to Freely Roaming. My name is Dan. In these next couple of videos, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries in general. So there's not gonna be a lot of how-tos in DIY construction or demonstration here. These are more just for sort of educational. These are my understandings from the reading and the research that I've done. So I will attempt to explain these to you in these videos. So if you're not into just a video of somebody talking and explaining, these may not be the videos for you. But if you are, I'm glad you're here. So lithium batteries. Um, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not you have to compress these cells or not. They're basically arguments on both sides. And as a matter of fact, both of these arguments are valid because just like everything else, how you build your lithium pack should be based on how you intend on using your lithium pack. That's why there are certain lithium battery packs that are built for electric vehicles. And there are other lithium packs that are built for medical purposes. And then there are lithium packs that are built for telecom purposes. And how you build yours, whether you're gonna be doing an off-grid home a uh, camper battery system, a boat battery system. So depending on what you're building your battery pack for, there are different techniques that you should apply to your build to make it better suited for your purpose. So before we talk about compressing or not and the reasons to do it or not, it's important for you guys to know just how these lithium batteries work. So if you were to cut away a lithium battery and look at the insides to see how it's constructed, it's constructed like most batteries most chemical batteries that is. So you have a cathode and then you have an anode. The cathode is the positive side and the anode is the negative side. In all lithium batteries, between the cathode and the anode, there's a piece of polymer sheet that acts as insulation. It's a piece of porous polymer sheet made out of some kind of plastic that allows lithium elements to go back and forth. Depending on the chemistry, so we're talking about lithium iron phosphate specifically, on the cathode side, you have this iron phosphate structure that's part of the cathode. And in the middle of that cathode is some kind of copper or aluminum rod that ends up being your battery post on the top that sticks out of the top of the battery. The way that they're set up is that they have a structure that allows what's called intercalation. Intercalation is basically the, the iron phosphate, also known as ferric phosphate structure, have these spaces inside um, the structure that allows lithium elements to be nested within. So as the lithium passes from the anode to the cathode, what happens is these lithium elements get sort of nested inside these spaces that are within the iron phosphate structure. And on the anode side, you have in most cases a carbon-based structure, usually made of graphite, that also allows the intercalation of lithium elements. So think about intercalation as just like, it's like a parking structure with a bunch of parking spaces. So cars that come in and out of the parking structure are lithium elements. They come in, there are spaces for them to park in. And when they leave, they back out, the, but the parking space now is empty for another car to come in. So that's what's happening between the cathode and the anode. So when your lithium battery is fully charged, all of your charged lithium ions are on the anode side of the permeable membrane. They're all intercalated into this graphite structure. As you draw power from the battery, the electrons pass through the anode through the load as the lithium particles pass through the membrane and over to the cathode side. And it gets intercalated into the iron phosphate structure waiting to be charged again. So when you charge and discharge the battery, this motion is happening constantly. Lithiums are being charged with electrons through the cathode side, passing through the membrane and going to the anode as it's being charged. And when you discharge them, the lithium comes back through the membrane to the cathode, getting intercalated into the iron phosphate structure. And this happens over and over again through all the cycles of charging and discharging your battery. As you can imagine, lots of things can happen through the life of a battery. So degradation will happen when either lithium elements can be intercalated into spaces in the anode or the cathode, or something can happen in the structure where the lithium elements cannot find its way through the permeable membrane and pass over to the cathode. And that's when you have degradation in your cell and you get permanently reduced capacity. So you can try to visualize how this might be working inside your battery. 
You have the anode and the cathode. In the graphite, carbon, and the ferric phosphate material is sort of like a paste that gets sort of smeared onto these electrodes. And they're all sort of encapsulated, submerged inside an electrolyte solution, usually some kind of liquid. So when you're charging these batteries, even though the resistance is really low, if you charge these batteries really quickly, you have a lot of electrons flowing in, that is still creating friction. And friction, as you might know in physics, will generate heat. And the faster you charge your batteries, the more heat it's gonna generate. So that's why the particular cell that I have has a 1C maximum recommended charge and discharge rate. If you charge at the maximum charge and discharge rate, it's gonna generate the most heat. Enough heat to the point where you can see the battery swell up and down. And even when you charge at a slower rate, it'll still generate some heat, but you're not gonna generate nearly as much heat compared to when you're charging at the highest maximum rate of capacity. So at 1C, you're gonna see the most flexing when you charge and discharge the batteries. That means it's gonna balloon out a little bit and it's gonna contract back down. And that repeated ballooning out and contracting down, which is gonna happen in cases like uh, electric vehicles, or if you're doing high amp draw, like you're using it for heating or electric stove or you know any type of situation where you're drawing a lot of power from these batteries in a very short amount of time, you're gonna see the most flexing up and down. And what that happens over time is that you have delamination that could occur. So delamination happens when you have a lot of flexing, you will literally delaminate the way that the electrodes are separated by this kind of polymer sheet in the middle and prevent these lithium elements from going back and forth as freely and intercalating into the cathode or the anode, which means you're gonna have degradation. As you're visualizing this, now you can kind of imagine what happens when you have your battery swelling up and down in a case of an electric vehicle or in the case where you're drawing 1C maximum rate from these batteries on a regular basis, you can imagine how compressing them might help. Applying some kind of pressure to these batteries, it can prevent the delamination, which means that you're gonna have slower degradation over time. And that is why in the spec sheet for these batteries, you'll see that when they talk about compression with the fixture, is what they call it, versus not using a compression fixture, you're gonna have 2,500-ish cycles versus 3,500 cycles between compression and no compression. But that only applies as tested by the manufacturer at a 1C charge and discharge rate. Unless you're using it for an electric vehicle, there is almost no chance that you're gonna be using it at such a high rate. 280 amp hours at a 1C rate will discharge the battery completely in one hour. So it's very unlikely if you're using it for an off-grid purpose or an RV or a boat purpose that you'll be charging and discharging at such a high rate. So that's why I say depending on what you're building your battery for, whether or not you choose compression versus not compression is totally up to you. And you might think, well, if it doesn't hurt, why not just compress them? Well, you know, part of that is true. You can choose to compress them regardless what you use it for. What does happen, it seems, in the test that the manufacturer has done in their spec sheet is that initially for compressed cells, they actually start to degrade a little bit faster than not compressed cells. I don't know if that's due to the potential damage that you're causing by compressing them too far initially and then kind of flatten out over time. One thing you want to keep in mind is that if you choose not to compress them, you want to make sure that the bus bar has some way to be able to flex. These bus bars that come with the manufacturer have a little arch built into them. Presumably is because when you bundle them together without compression, as the battery sort of balloons out when heat is generated, it will tend to give the battery a little bit of flex so you don't rip out these electrodes on the top of the batteries, the terminals. By compressing them, you prevent that movement from happening, so you don't have to worry about those terminals stripping out as much. And also with compression, there's less airflow between the cells, which means that you could potentially be generating more heat. If you're using your battery in a hot temperature, in a hot environment, you're gonna wanna think about cooling, especially if you're charging and discharging at the maximum 1C rate. So there you go. That's sort of a basic rundown of how lithium batteries work and whether or not you should compress them. And it's a choice that you have to decide for your purpose based on your build. I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys as always for watching. Thank you guys for all your support. And I'll see you guys in the next video.